I guess I should have something to say about this episode that I just saw and I really don't have anything to say and I'm confused. I've noticed I have a way of speaking when I'm trying to say something about the show where I sound really stressed because I feel kind of stressed. I feel like I have to have something important to say or I shouldn't bother talking. But if this is just a personal diary kind of experiment for myself, then I should be able to say whatever I want and I shouldn't be worried about it. But by the very nature of putting this up publicly available, because yes, I do want to engage with other people and have them engage with me, it becomes performative instead of private and stress follows from that naturally. I think. I don't know what to say about this episode. I'm confused. I'm... I'm confused. Why is this episode two? Some people seem to have this amazing ability to just flip on the camera and talk fluently and fluidly and be engaging and confident and they know what they're saying and they know what they want to say. They know where they want to get to from when they start speaking. And I am discovering that I am not one of those people. But maybe if I practice, I can become one of those people. And I think that is one of the things that I'm after with this little project. That is a skill I would like to have. Even if I don't really have any business pontificating about the Batman, the 2005 children's cartoon, the art of practicing, of working through talking to this little recording device as if I have something to say, that's something I definitely feel is a worthwhile investment of my time. I don't know, even if it did win six daytime Emmys, if I think that this is like a really good show, but there's a part in the second episode where Detective Yin is just, you know, out driving around and she happens to get a report about Bane fucking shit up and she decides that she's gonna run in guns blazing and get him on her own, which is insane and goes exactly as well for her as, as you think that it might. And her partner anticipates that it's going to go pretty badly. And she's on the radio with him and he goes, aren't we off duty? And her response is essentially that she's never off duty. Um, And that is a character I would want as a role model for my children. Like, she's infinitely cooler than Bruce Wayne. And that is something about the show that I really fucking love. I love Detective Yen. I love her. I don't really know how I feel about the rest of the episode. I don't... I'm confused. Because I think there's one reading of it where it's a really terrible episode and one reading of it where it's actually a really good episode. And that's because the villain is Bane, which if you look at it as being about the villain makes no sense. But if you look at this villain as an excuse to open up something else between a couple of the other characters is really, really smart. Why have Bane as the villain of the second episode? Bane's like a huge figure in Batman mythos. He breaks Bruce Wayne's back. He's like the ultimate challenge to Batman's strength. And I think bringing out such a heavy hitter in the second episode doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense from a storytelling perspective. Um, I do wonder if it matters as much when you're telling stories for kids, and especially kids who might not have any other connection to this villain. They might not see Bane come out and go, oh my god, that's the man who broke the bat, unless they're really, really nerdy kids. Um, He'll just be another scary villain but even with him as another scary villain he 
beats the crap out of Bruce Wayne in this episode. So what is the point of having a second episode, your very number two episode of the whole show? It's the very second story all your viewers see. What is the point of having a second story that makes your main character so vulnerable? Um, I think you can look at it at a, as a story that shows that no matter what, your main character is going to overcome all the odds, in which case it sucks all the drama out of the rest of the series. And I think that's a bad choice, whether you're telling a story to a two-year-old or an 82-year-old. It really doesn't matter who your target audience is. I think that is a choice that doesn't make any sense. But I would like to give this show the benefit of the doubt and think that there's something better going on here or something more interesting going on here um so what might that be what might be a more interesting or forgiving reading of an episode that brings out such a heavy hitter and, and disempowers your main character so early in the series like why not build up bruce more before you give him such a monumental challenge it allows us to see more of alfred's relationship to bruce i think i've already said this but i'm going to say it again i think the most important relationship in bruce wayne's life is with alfred pennyworth everybody else is really like secondary they don't matter really by comparison to alfred and this is an episode that is about answering the question of how much Alfred's going to put up with uh, with Bruce. Um, because Bruce almost gets killed by Bane and decides to go and fight him anyway. And Alfred is very, very frustrated. Which makes this episode about establishing the extent of Alfred's loyalty in the face of Bruce's self-destructive tendencies. And I think insofar as that is true, bringing out Bane in the second episode is really, really smart because we've now taken care of the question of how much will Alfred put up with? Alfred will put up with just about anything. So if anything happens later in the series that ruptures that relationship, it's going to be huge and it's going to carry a lot of weight. And I'm curious to see if there's sort of like a Chekhov's gun thing going on here where because we've established the extent of Alfred's loyalty, the only interesting thing to do is push it to the breaking point. And I'll be really excited to see if that ever happens. In the process of trying to help myself have a thought, I went looking for reviews of this episode and I found a fantastic blog called Rubber Lotus, which I have a, a link to below. Uh, which is by someone who went through and did a whole you know, series of retrospective reviews of this show. And I absolutely loved what I read. And I've learned quite a bit uh, that I didn't know about Batman as a cultural product and a cultural phenomenon. And I can't wait to keep reading it. But it still begs the question for me, which is the question I asked before. And I still don't really have an answer. Why is Bruce Wayne so compelling? This version of Bruce Wayne is sort of a teenage jerk face, and in a few of the reviews I found, he's compared to Tony Stark, and, and he really is sort of Tony Stark-esque, not just because this episode shows him messing around with heavy machinery in his basement, blasting rock and roll, um, but because he's kind of an entitled brat um which for me is a very valid interpretation of bruce wayne as a character but not an interesting one and not one that i particularly care about and yet i still want to watch this show because bruce is still the guy who goes out and gets the crap beat out of him and refuses to stay down because he feels 
a sense of responsibility to his city. And I think in many ways that sense of responsibility is warped and misplaced. But it's still there. But that is, I think that's the core of what makes Batman interesting to me, that he... I think Batman is interesting and compelling to me in every form I've ever read because he's really a kind of moral dichotomy. It's it's a laudable mission. You know, his heart's in the right place, but everything he does in, in pursuit of what his heart wants is so wrong somehow. And watching that kind of horrible train wreck unfolding for good reasons is really mesmerizing. And there there are i'm sure many many interesting things to say about how that plays into a larger cultural dynamic and i think that continuing to watch this character and think about this character will for me unfold into a sort of fruitful and interesting study of some aspect of American culture. So if for no other reason, I think that's going to keep me plugging away. That and the benefits I hope might accrue to me from just the, the practice getting comfortable blasting myself across into the, blasting myself into the, you know, hollow echo chamber of cyberspace as if that will make me a more confident person in general. <laughs>